Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you spectral editing in Reaper. Now, just to review, we can view our waveforms in a few different ways. This is considered normal. We can go to the options menu and go down here to peaks display mode and change it from normal to spectral peaks or spectrogram. We could also change it in this dialog down here, peaks display settings. And it looks like this, or we could open it in the view menu. Peaks display settings. Now, if we switch it to spectral peaks, it looks like this. We have different colors for different frequencies, making it easier to see the high frequencies against the low ones. And we could tweak it by moving this around, adjusting the opacity, and a bunch of other things. But we could also see it as a spectrogram, which looks like this. Here we can also see the frequencies separated as the highs and the lows. And we can move it around with the frequency logarithmic, so we can focus on different frequencies, adjust the curve of those colors, or the contrast, or the brightness. And we can shift the colors right here, just by dragging them around. And if we want to put it back, we could double click any of them, or we could right click and reset them to the defaults. Now, if you want to see these more clearly, or you want to edit them, you're probably going to want to work on one track at a time. So you're not going to need to see all of your waveforms as spectrograms. So we could do this a different way. Let's put this back to peaks, and let's choose a track that we want to work on. There's a vocal up here. Let's make it bigger. And let's select it, and then right click it, and go down here to spectral edits. Over here, we could choose show spectrogram. That's going to put the spectrogram just on this item. So once again, we could tweak it with the colors, the frequency logarithmic, the curve, the contrast, and the brightness. Now, what's the purpose of this? Well, let's say you want to edit certain sounds that only appear at certain frequencies. Maybe the click of a bass track, the S sound on a vocal, or some P popping, or even the squeak on an acoustic guitar. We can focus on those frequencies and just edit those instead of the full frequency audio. So let's do that with this vocal. Let's put this back to normal. Let's find an S sound on this vocal. Let's hear this piece over here in solo. And this song fell out in right here on song. And this song fell out. The S is jumping out. So let's put this back to spectrogram. And we can see right here the energy on this section is up here, as opposed to down here for the other notes. So let's tweak the frequency logarithmic right here. See how it separates the S from these notes? So we can focus on it a little bit easier. Adjust our curve. And everything we're doing right here isn't affecting the sound. It's just affecting what we see. So we can see more clearly what we're working on. Let's do the contrast. Make sure it sticks out. The brightness. And adjust the color so we can really see the S sound. So now let's try to edit the S sound a bit, so it's not as prominent. And we could do that by making a selection right here, right-clicking, go to Spectral Edits, and choose Add Spectral Edit to Item. Let's hit Escape to clear the time selection. And it created this little box right here where we can edit just this section. Now, right now, this is full frequency. But we just want to work on this section right here, the high frequency S sound. 
not the entire thing. So we can make this box smaller by going to the top right here. See how the cursor changes and pulling it down. The same on the bottom. Or go to the corner. See how that cursor changes and change the size of our box right from here. So make it smaller here and here. So it just focused on this S sound. And to make sure, let's bring the volume down. This knob right here, this is the gain for just the section. Let's bring it all the way down and let's hear it. And this song fell out. And this song fell out. It just pulls out the top end or the S section for that spot. But that's a bit too drastic. So let's put it back by double clicking it. And let's bring it down just a bit, about 5 dB. Now you should know that the preview display we're seeing now, where the colors are changing, is just a preview. The actual audio render might look a bit different. So if you want it to be more accurate, you can glue this audio to see that result. And then we could undo it so you can go back to editing it. Now it's here. And this song fell out. And this song fell out. That's a lot better. Now, if we right click this box, we can change the FFT size. We can go smaller or larger than the default of 1024 points. Smaller FFT equals lower frequency resolution and higher temporal resolution. Larger FFT equals more frequency resolution and less temporal resolution and more pre-echo or smearing. So play around with these and see which works best for you. Now these other knobs right here can control the fading in and fading out of the edit. Let's pull this all the way down, the gain, so we can see the effect of these two knobs. If I bring this one up, see how it fades in and fades out the effect? In this case, a volume change. So it's a smoother transition. And if we use the next knob, it's the frequency fade. So it's gonna fade in the top and the bottom. So again, it's a better transition. We can still move this around to focus in on that section, bring the volume back up, and then slowly bring it down so we can see the colors change so the S's don't stick out as much. Let's bring it down about 5 dB, and now it's here. And this song fell out, and this song fell out. Before, right click and bypass it. And this song fell out, and after. And this song fell out in a minute. Sounds a lot better. Now besides making a square around this frequency, we could also draw the shape we want to work with. If I hold down control, on the PC or Command on the Mac and go up here to the corner, it changes to a pencil tool. So we can draw the shape we want to use on the top and the bottom. Or if you want to delete that drawing, hold on Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac, it turns to an X and we could delete what we just drew and put it back to a square. That's if you want to change that shape. But we can always drag it around to different sections. Now these knobs down here, they allow us to add a compressor or a noise gate. This is probably going to be used on bigger sections. Let's say we zoom out. We're working on a whole section that's this long, and we want to compress. We can bring the ratio up and bring the compression threshold down, and then it's going to compress just these frequencies as it's playing. Or, put these back, we can use these two knobs as a noise gate. So we can bring this up, and it creates these black sections where the frequency is too low, so it'll gate out those frequencies. But for the most part, I usually just use the gain and readjust the fade ins and outs on the left and right, and the top and bottom. Now one of the best things about this is we can now copy this to other sections. Like right over here, there's an F sound. 
And this song fell out. So we could duplicate this by holding that control on the PC or command on the Mac and moving it over to here. Then we could resize it on this side and this side. So it makes more sense for this edit. We could readjust it to bring down that F sound. And it's just working on that frequency. And this song fell out in a bit too much. And this song fell out in a minute flat. That's a lot better. In bypass, on both of them. And this song fell out. It's a bit too peaky. Let's put it back. And it just reduces these two frequencies in these two sections. And this song fell out in a minute. So we can go through the rest of the song. Duplicating them to other sections. There's one other thing I want to show you. If we go over here to the first line, there's a P that's popping out. Found some words on a pale white. On the word pale. Words on a pale white page. Right over here. Let's zoom in and adjust this so that P sticks out. Adjust the colors right there. Brightness. A contrast. That's pretty good. Right over here is that P sound with too much low end information. Words on a pale white, words on a pale white. So we can fix that with spectral editing. So we'll select it again, right click, spectral editing, add spectral edit to item. That creates it right here. We can redraw this right here. Just for this section, let's bring it over here. And if we bring it down, words on a pale white. It's a lot clearer. Let's fade it in a bit on each side, top and bottom. Words on a pale white. That's a lot better. Before, words on a pale white. Hear that P has a lot of low end. Words on a pale white. And then after. Words on a pale white pit. That's a lot clearer. Words on a pale white pit. It completely eliminated the P pop. So just by working on the low end, not the whole frequency, we can remove or reduce any weird sounds like S's, P pops, B sounds, or any clicks or rumble that we have in our audio. I should also show you, there's also a bunch of actions that go with spectral editing to toggle them on and off, show them for selected items, and even adding spectral edit to an item. So we could add keystrokes to any of these, so we could trigger those actions a lot quicker. So that's pretty much it. That's spectral editing in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Oh!